Hey, good morning, guys. We're going to be doing um, a homemade bread, an Italian bread done in a bread machine. If you don't have a bread machine, you can still do it by hand. So we're going to be doing the bread um, in the bread machine. If you don't have a bread machine, like I just said, that is completely fine. You could do it by hand. I have a pizza dough out, uh, the dough recipe out there is similar to that. Um, and if you hear something sizzling, that's because I'm making a pot roast in the background. Well, you could, if you were doing this by hand, you're going to still, you know, combine your, well, I'll tell you the recipe, but the only difference is you're going to, instead of having your bread machine, you're going to be letting, you're going to be doing it by hand. So you're going to be kneading your bread for eight to 10 minutes. You could use also your stand mixer. I should be talking to you, but, um, you could use a stand mixer. You could use a kitchen aid to do that. Okay. Then once it's done, you're going to let it sit. Let me put it this way. I'm going to flip it. I can't flip it, guys. So I apologize for that. So I'm, I'm sorry you're stirring at my bread machine. Um, let me shut it off. You're going to um, let your bread machine or your kitchen, uh, your hand mixer, get that gluten going. And you're going to let it knead it. Um, if not, you could do it by hand. You knead it for about eight minutes. You know, six to eight minutes, even time is fine. The more you work it, the better it is. Um, then you're going to let it rise for about an hour to hour and a half in a um, warm, I say dark place, a warm place. You could have your oven on. You could have it sitting by your oven. You could have a, You have to put saran wrap and a towel over that. If you have a heating pad, you could put it on top of a heating pad. If you have a heating blanket, you could fold it in a heating blanket. Um, but you're going to let it rise for about an hour to hour and a half. You're going to take it out. You're going to punch it down, get all those air bubbles out. Then you're going to re-knead it for about three to six times only. Then... You're going to um, shape it into whatever, if you're going to put it in a loaf pan, right, you, you, you put it in a loaf pan, you're going to oil your loaf pan. You could use um, oil, you could use Crisco, just regular Crisco, and you could even do a little butter. You could do a mixture. Watch if you use butter because it could burn. When I do Crisco, I do a mixture of uh, a little bit of butter with some Crisco. Um, and then you're going to put, again, cover that up again, put it in the same dark place, warm, dark place, and then let it rise for another hour. Then you're good to go and bake it in your oven. Okay. Hey guys, we're all set up to make the, um, if the, it's like Italian bread, French bread, Italian bread in our bread machine. And again, if you don't have a bread machine, you can still make the recipe. Um, but for our bread machine, I am using bread machine yeast. Okay. If you didn't have a bread, if you don't have a bread machine, use, um, instant yeast you could use a instant rise yeast and actually you could use active dry yeast okay um but you could definitely use uh instant yeast um okay so anyway we got sugar in here we got our salt we got our bread machine yeast I'm, this is for my water i'm going to keep it about 80 to 90 degrees here's my measuring cups and measuring spoons um and here is guys and, and just so you know wait a minute here is um spring water because I don't believe you could use tap water. I believe the chlorine in there does kill some of your yeast. And it affects the quality and the rise and the tenderness of your bread. And if you don't want to go get um, water, that's fine. You could use tap water, but let it sit out overnight, 24 hours. Because that will help uh, with the chlorine, you know, it, it dissipate. It dis Can I pronounce that word? Dissipate. Thank you. Dissipates. Okay. And the flour to me is very important. Okay. Um, this is King Arthur. I use nothing but King Arthur unbleached bread flour when I'm making bread. I like this brand. Maybe you have a different brand you like, and that's fine too, but this is what Lisa uses. Okay. Okay, guys, when I do my bread flour, um, when I use bread flour, when I'm doing it in the bread machine, I do not pack it. Um, I'll explain what I mean by that. Guys, I thought I was recording. I do this all the time. I made a big mess because I was showing you guys how I fluffed the flour. I just put my hand in and I lift it and let it fall back in. You don't sift bread flour when you're making bread. I just put my hand in, lift it, and drop it back in. I just loosen it up a little bit. I break it up. I go as far down as I can, and then I'll have to do it again. I want four cups of um, flour for this recipe, so I'll probably get two cups before I have to do it again. Okay. I'll show you what we're going to do. Before we make our bread... I get everything laid out because once you heat up the, you just got to have all your ingredients laid out. I know you can't see this bowl. I just want you, because it's more important to see the flour right now, uh, how I measure this. Because I do not, like I said, I already fluffed it. So now I'm going to just dip in. 
right? And I'm not going to go like we do for when we're making um, uh, cookies or cakes. We're just, we don't, we normally we go tap, 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 and we're not doing that. We're just going to make sure it's in the back and just slide it right off. And I know it's going to fall all over the place and that's okay. All right. That's it. One level cup. I'll do one more. Let me fluff it a little bit more. And I don't want any, I know I'm anal, but I don't want any of that extra flour to fall off in my bowl. This should be precise. Okay. So now we'll just scrape it right off. Like that. Okay. And right it into our bowl. I'm going to get two more cups and then I'll be back. Okay, guys, we're ready to assemble everything. This was a little too hot and I put it in my freezer for a minute, but you just want to make sure it's um like a baby. This has to be a little bit cooler than a baby's bottle. Remember the old fashioned way when we would test the baby's bottle here, a little bit cooler than that. When you're making pizza dough or yeast rolls, you could have it the temperature of a baby's bottle or a little bit warmer. But for this, I want it a little bit cooler. You have to be careful because yeast is temperamental. You could kill it in a flash. Anyway, so let's get going. You follow your own bread machine manufacturer's um, instructions, but you start it outside, unplugged, and then you always start with your, um, basically your wet ingredients, okay? And if you were gonna, so let me put the um, water in first. This is not tap water, this is spring water. Again, I don't wanna sound like a broken record. If you're gonna use tap water, it could kill, it, and it will kill some of your yeast. So let it sit out overnight, okay. Um, Number one, if you were going to use melted butter, you would put it in now. If you want to use a little olive oil or vegetable oil, you would put it now. Um, next, I'm going to add my sugar and my salt. But I just want to say, if you were, sometimes I do like an, um, a seasoned Italian bread. I'll put fresh garlic in, like a clove or two of fresh uh, zested garlic. Or you could use garlic powder. I've done that. And I've used Italian seasonings in here. This is where you would want to put it. Um, even a little bit of oregano. But today it's just plain French bread. Okay, nothing fancy. Um, so, and I'm doing this for our two pound loaf. My bread machine does one pound, one and a half pounds and two pounds. This is for our two pound lo loaf. So I put one and one fourth cups water in. Now we're going to do a tablespoon of the sugar and I already have it measured out right in here. It's a teaspoon and a half of salt right in here. Now I'm going to add very carefully my flour my four cups of flour and then I'm going to add one and a half teaspoons as I showed you before the bread machine yeast and it is instant okay so let's just get this in here we're just going to keep doing this you don't have to but I'm just going to um, make sure my flour is all even in all the corners okay otherwise you get like a little bit of a you still are going to get that little hill on the end of it um so i'm just smoothing it in the corners barely and now i may just make a little bit teeny bit of a, a well for my yeast again you have to have fresh yeast and this stays in the refrigerator a teaspoon and a half right in there and then let's do the half Now I just worked with the yeast, so I will definitely clean up everything thoroughly. Now I'm going to put this in my bread machine. Do you want to watch? I guess so. Let's watch. Okay. Now let me bring it over so you guys can see a little bit better. I don't think you're going to see at this angle, actually. I'm not sure. Let me hire it. Now we're going to put it in, and it's going to click. It's going to lock. Hear that? That's locked now. Um, and always make sure your little kneading hook in the bottom of this, I forgot to show you, is in securely. And it's okay when you're done, when you're done cooking and this bakes for it to be in the bottom of your bread. You just, I showed you on one video, you just pick it out. Um, I don't know if I posted that video yet. Okay. So now you close the lid and I'm going to plug it in and I'm going to follow my bread machine. 
I want number four, I think, for French bread. So let me go to my menu. Let's see. I'm on. Let's go to number four. Let's see if that's it. Okay. It's French bread. Double check. I want two pound. My color loaf, I want medium. I could go light, medium, dark. I'm good to go. I'm going to hit start. And we have three hours and 48 minutes until homemade Italian bread. As you can see, it's kneading. It's going to do this a couple of times. Um, and there's one other thing. Oh, during the first few minutes, you can lift this door open to check. Here's my window. It does get fogged up. I want to take a peek. That's okay. Um, as I was saying, if you have to, you could adjust it. If it looks too dry, add, a, add a, a teaspoon of water. If it looks too dry, add for this pizza dough is different. For this, I would add a teaspoon of flour and, and check it. Okay. And this is it. And I'll be back when this is done. Guys, hear that? I don't know if you can't see, but it's already started to um, go around and around. And here we go in circles. I told you my glass frogs up. Okay, and we just, we only went, what, was it three minutes? Long way to go. All right, we'll be back. Guys, uh, can you see where I'm rise right now? And this is what it looks like in the little hole. And it hasn't baked yet. We have an hour, 55 minutes. Um, but yeah, we're still on our uh, rise. Okay, I'm excited. Halfway there. Second rise, guys. It is, it is baking. And if you can see inside the hole, I don't know why it has that little uh, thingy back there, but it's okay. Okay, let's get back to work. I got lots of work to do. Guys, let's see if there's enough clearance. Okay. Oh. All right, we're going to unlock it. I actually have a little thing to pick up this hook in here. We're going to turn it, I believe, to the right. Was it the left? The left. Take it out. Put that down because that's still hot. Move that back. And this is what our bread looks like. Now, I don't know why we have that little thing attached. That's okay. Let's put the light on. I'm gonna get some clean paper towels. Now please remember, guys, this is very hot to always use something. Now, I don't think this is gonna come right out, but oh, that's hot. I don't think that's gonna come straight out. And if not, I'll show you the bottom real quick. See this? We, we turn that, and that will loosen it up, let's say. I'm going to give half to my um, son and his wife. Okay, this is not going to come out, so let's wiggle it. And it's okay to put this on top of the um, bread, but again, it's very hot, so we're going to take caution and just start wiggling this. And the, the hook, the, the kneading paddle may stay in the bread machine pan or it may be in your bread. Either way it's okay. I'll show you how to get it out if it's in the bread. I think I've done a video like this. I think it's mixed into one of my videos. Let's see. Hmm? And if and I, I and obviously if you let this sit in a minute and cool, it will loosen from the sides. But I just don't want any wetness in here. So I there you go. I believe when you keep it in the warming thing, it gets a little moist. Maybe that was just me the one day. I don't know. But here we go. And it's in the bread, which is fine. And let's see if you can see it. See that? We'll zoom in. 
That's the hook. That's fine. We'll get it out. You just use a knife. Okay. And you just poke at it. We better do it like this. That's all. This one's pretty good in there. And that's it. We'll just chip away at it. And I'm lifting it from in here. Must that I might want to take that little piece of crust off, which is fine. And I can feel this hook is very hot. So oh. somebody is calling. Okay. I can feel it on my watch. I just don't want to touch it, guys, because I know how hot it is. Take that little piece off. Get in there. I just pushed it back in there. All right, it's popped up. I just got to grip it. There you go. It's out. And then you just put that back in there. And look, nobody will ever know because I'm just going to cut this in half anyway. I'm going to give, like I said, half away. So, all right, guys, here is your bread, homemade bread. And it smells honestly like a bakery. It honestly does smell amazing. It smells so, East always smells good. Do you know what I'm saying? So, I'm very happy. Nice. Very nice. Guys, don't mind this. This is just my mashed potatoes. But listen, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to just cut this in half now. All right? For the, for everybody. <sighs> Hear that crunchiness? Oh, my God. Amazing. Amazing. I just love it. Nice. Ooh, it's hot. Oh, okay. oh, it's hot, hot, hot. Okay. And here you go. Look at that. Let's zoom in. Does that look amazing or what, guys? And it is. So let's put some butter on a piece. Ready? And this, I, you know why I made this, guys? I made this to go with my pot roast night to dunk this inside that gravy. OMG. This dunked in that gravy is gonna going to be so delicious. Okay, let me put this on a plate. All right guys, we're just gonna put a little butter on this. Mm. Not too much, just a little bit. But guys, look, seriously, yummy. Really yummy. All right, let me tr well, let me take a photo and then I'll be back. And I'm gonna take a photo. I'm just gonna dip and in, break into this. I mmm, it's so good. I make this all the time. It's really, really good. Mmm, mmm, mmm. I cannot explain that taste. You all must know what yeast tastes like. Woo, hold on. I just put my hands inside to get this little gravy. And I'm not gonna burn my taste buds. So I just, I mean, it's smoking hot. Here's the homemade uh, French bread, Italian bread with the pot roast gravy. Oh my God. Mmm. 
That pot roast is so good. That pot roast gravy is so good and it's really good on that bread. Mm, but that pot roast is good.